I'm a girl. I like to travel a lot. About a year ago, I went to Italy. Florencia. There, I was meeting up with a friend, since we were going to a festival that was happening that month. I took a taxi in order to go to her place. She had told me the direction and the general route that I had to take. I told the driver the direction and he started driving. Maybe ten minutes later. I noticed he's going the complete opposite way of where I had told him to go. I looked at him and told him again the direction, thinking that maybe he misunderstood me. He didn't reply and kept driving. Now I know that I'm in trouble. I try to roll down the window, but to no avail. At this point, I'm super scared, and I'm not a very strong person. I tell the driver, in broken Italian, Please, don't do this. He kind of smirks and doesn't reply. But suddenly a miracle happens. My friend calls. I completely ignore what she was saying, and I say this, making sure the driver understands. Y yes, he's here. Bring back up. I can hear my friend talking through the phone, confused. Yet I choose not to reply to her. The driver looks at me, up and down. For a second, I didn't think he was going to believe my bluff, but he pulls over, takes my back and pushes me out, bruising my knee. I still have my phone with me. Maybe he forgot I had it, or he knew that he could be tracked through it. Either way. I kept talking to my friend, and eventually she found me, and we walked to her place. I'm pretty sure that guy was in some sort of organ trafficking, but I can't be sure. Growing up, I always had quite the imagination. This is why I've hesitated to post this story here. As a kid, I was really into crime shows. CSI, NCIS, Criminal Minds, that sort of thing. Anything creepy... I was 100% into. I'd like to say this happened about four years ago in 2011, but my memory seems to have failed me. Anyways, I was about 13, 17 now, and living with my mom, brother and stepdad. We weren't the wealthiest of people, but we got by. During this particular part of my life, we lived in a cosy basement apartment Three bedrooms, kitchen, bathroom, living room, porch, and laundry room. Nothing fancy, but enough for us. We'd been living in this apartment for about two years before the new occupants of the second-story apartment moved in. They seemed innocent enough. Middle-aged husband and wife with no kids. New to the area. Now, I should say, because of my love for crime shows, I instantly knew something was off with these people. They never spoke to us, and barely left their house. You'd never have known they lived there if it wasn't for their arguing. Every night, day in and day out, for about two hours you'd hear fighting, screaming, things being thrown, the whole nine yards. I even went so far as to hit the ceiling of my room with a broom. I know, right? But what else can a 13-year-old do in an attempt at quieting them down? One night, just as I was settling in for bed, the fighting began as usual. I thought nothing of it, and just continued with my routine, even turning the TV on to block out some of the noise. I should also mention, for future reference, that in my room my bed was positioned directly across from my window, allowing me to see outside my window to underneath the above patio. After about an hour, it got eerily quiet upstairs leaving me to think the husband had passed out drunk. I don't know what made me look up for my TV, but when I did, I could see directly out of my window. Now, who would be crouched right outside my window, staring in, other than the husband himself? At this point, I am scared shitless, huddling in my bed and debating if I should even yell for my mom in the living room, or just sit there in utter silence. Me being me, I chose to just sit there. The husband must have sat outside my window for a good twenty minutes before getting up and leaving. Even though he didn't do anything directly to me, this has haunted me for the last few years. You can best believe I didn't sleep well that night. 
I guess I should add that a few months later this couple passed out with food cooking, catching the stove on fire. We hear the fire alarms going off and go on to haul them out of their apartment after a good ten minutes of banging on their door. After that they moved out pretty quickly. I haven't told anybody this story, mainly because I don't think anyone would believe me. So, creepy husband who gave 13-year-old me nightmares. Let's not meet again. Kathy's parents emigrated from Greece in the 1950s and had three daughters, Kathy the oldest, Yvonne and Carol. They settled in a slightly rural area of New South Wales, Australia. Skip forward to 1988. Kathy is working in her parents' coffee shop, which the entire family lives above. The younger two girls would stay behind the counter and sell the cakes and other nibbles, and Kathy would make the coffee and bring it to the tables. She was a young twenty-something, trying to earn a bit of money to help put herself through university. The coffee shop was in a slightly rural area, situated sort of between two larger cities, so they often had customers from out of town that would stop for a break, driving from one city to the other. There was this one customer that just creeped all three girls out. He had wandering eyes. When he laughed too loudly, his smile didn't reach his eyes, and he showed too many teeth when he grinned. Like the cartoon Joker's grimace, all teeth and crazy eyes. This customer used to hire himself out to shoot pest kangaroos on farms, and then he would put the kangaroos in bags and sell them for a little extra money. Kangaroo makes a surprisingly nice steak if you ever get the chance to try it. This customer had a habit of bringing too many things in when he came to get coffee and cake. A large collection of hunting knives on his belt, a shotgun over his shoulder. It just made everyone uncomfortable. So Kathy and her dad made a sign and put it in the window, asking that all hunting equipment be left outside the shop. After getting caught too many times staring at his daughter's behinds, Kathy's dad made all of the girls go upstairs any time this customer came in. It wasn't so often. He'd come in twice a week, disappear for a few weeks to a few months, then come back. Kathy managed to save up enough to move out, and was walking to university one day in May. 1994, when she saw a large picture of that creepy customer on the front page of the newspaper. Underneath the picture it read, Ivan Milat, Backpacker Murderer. Hey guys, bit of a short one this week. Sorry about that, but I think you'll agree the stories were quite good nonetheless. Also, it's not the size that counts, it's, uh, oh, I don't know, how you listen to it? Anyway, as always, like, subscribe, and comment, and until next time, take care guys.